Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildred, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. I'm going to stop that impression right now. In a previous musing, I opined on the D20 universal fallacy. This notion that D20 in general, and D&D specifically, can be used for virtually anything. It's something that I saw a lot of in the light of the OGL bubble from 2000 to 2005, and now in the wake of the RPG streaming bubble that I've talked about previously. Now, the D20 system can be very flexible, but I maintain that you cannot just reskin a few fluff names and call it a day. You have to rebuild with the type of setting in mind using the skeleton of the system. This is why the second attempt at Star Wars D20, Saga Edition, succeeded, and the first one failed. This is all the more case with genres like superheroes, which has such a variety of subgenres, tones, and feels that many of D20's traditions would fall on its face. This brings us to Mutants and Masterminds, long considered to be the definitive D20 superhero RPG. While its third edition does venture away from some of the naming conventions of D20, the DNA is still present. Does it hold up? Well, let's find out. Comic books, for the most part, wear their sense of color on their sleeve, even if their color is minimal. This book is no exception with bold font use and an artwork style that channels a multitude of comic book eras. Additionally, every chapter has a different color identity to help it stand out. I also appreciate the various under-the-hood asides throughout the book. It helps put a glimpse inside the designer's head. This is overall a stellar presentation, and best of all, it actually has an index. Like most superhero and universal RPGs, character creation is going to be pretty crunchy. For the purposes of this, we'll be crunching the proverbial numbers with our sample hero in Aeon, a magic-based hero in the vein of Doctor Strange and, to a lesser extent, the Shadow Man. The first step is power level, which determines the amount of power points to spend on abilities, defenses, skills, advantages, and, well, powers. In this case, we'll be going with power level 10. Next, abilities. Unlike its predecessor, 3rd edition uses 8 ability scores and does them as straight bonuses instead of using the whole score conversion thing. Each of them, however, costs 2 points per rank of ability. Aeon's case in this spread is Strength 0, Agility 1, Fighting 4, Awareness 6, Stamina 0, Dexterity 3, Intellect 3, and Presence 4. Additionally, at this time, points are also spent on defenses on a 1-to-1 -one basis. So we'll be spending 7 points on Dodge, 4 on Parry, 6 on Fortitude, and 7 on Will. Next is Skills, which is spent on a 1-for-2 basis. In this case, we'll spend 5 points on Magic Expertise, 3 on Insight, 2 on Investigation, 2 on Perception, and 2 on Sleight of Hand. After that is Advantages. This game's equivalent to feats from its predecessor. Advantages cost 1 point per rank in said advantage, or simply 1 point if unranked. We'll be spending 11 points on the following advantages. Equipment 3 for our headquarters, Ranged Attack 5, Trance, Accurate Attack, and Power Attack. Fourth is Powers, the abilities and techniques available to heroes. This is the most crunchy part of the process, with costs varying depending on the base effect, modified by extras and or flaws, and then multiplied by the rank, as well as any flat modifiers. This is where the bulk of Aeon's magical powers will be demonstrated. We'll be spending 24 points on ranged damage with 8 points on alternate effects, 27 points on flight 4, sustained protection 12, impervious 6, which totals at 59 points. Finally, complications. These are the hero's drawbacks, be they mental or physical weaknesses. Whenever they take effect in play, the player gets a hero point. In this case, we need to pick two complications, which will go with motivation, acceptance, and accident. I will not mince words. Crunchiness in character creation is an inevitability with superhero RPGs by virtue of having to cover so many kinds of characters. Mutants and Masterminds, as I mentioned before, is no exception, with powers especially in this. While this version does its best to mitigate the issue, the crunch will be the determining factor for people. Personally, my only concern is one that I've had for a while, and that is balancing power levels between different types of heroes. In other words, making a street-level hero who can still be street at high levels. I don't think there's a true solution to this, but at least 3rd edition doesn't have the problem as much as it could have. While it's not entirely superhero D20 like it was before, Mutants and Masterminds still retains a lot of the DNA of the 20-sided bubble. The core dice roll is the same, D20 plus or minus the appropriate modifiers versus the target number. 
However, instead of having a base defense along with some saving throw modifiers, as in typical D20, you have five defenses that act as the target number. Dodge, Parry, Fortitude, Toughness, and Will. Further deviating this is how damage works. If an attack successfully connects, the target must roll a toughness check, with the target number being the attack's damage rank, plus 15. Failing this check inflicts escalating penalties for the first three failures, and the fourth incapacitates the target. I like this sort of approach. As much like the condition track in Saga Edition, it's a way to speed up combat without making it less interesting. Plus, superheroes don't really work with classic health pools anyways. The use of five defenses is an interesting choice, but I think their effective use is going to be dependent on the GM's ability to improvise, especially since the core book doesn't go as far as I'd like into what distinguishes, say, dodge and parry. Now, Mutants and Masterminds' form of extra effort, once again, has a literal form and one that's more in line with what you'd expect from the term. In the former case, you end up exerting extra stamina as a free action to do things like boost a particular ability, retry an action, gain additional effects, or take an extra action. Doing so puts the character in a fatigue state, which can escalate to exhausted or incapacitated on repeat uses. Hero points, the more figurative extra effort, are awarded on the GM's call to allow players to edit the scene, use an ability they normally not have, reroll a failed check, or negate the fatigue from extra effort. The hero point system's use or abuse here is going to be GM dependent. While I like it to a degree, I feel it's a little too broad for its own good. I think the pool could use some restraints to minimize haul and dump practices, or to prevent the GM from going full Monty Hall with the points. It's the primary reward for being superheroes, and because of that, I feel it could use some expansion. Other than that, the remaining mechanics are pretty straightforward and to the point, being just familiar enough for D20 veterans. Mutants and Masterminds continues to be one of the standard bearers for superhero RPGs, and the third edition is no exception. While it's shedding the excess baggage of D20, the result is a much leaner and more optimized game. There are definitely some powers that I'm going to miss, but since the conversion guide is available, it's not a total loss. That said, there is one major elephant in the room. Character creation, as I've said before, and I know this sounds a bit repetitive, it's going to be crunchy any way you slice it. That's not a deal breaker for me personally, but I could see it being for others. This is why I'm glad the game is generous with custom archetypes and that there's plenty of sample characters to fall back on. I still have the street level problem that I mentioned before, but not as much as I did in Revised. All in all, Mutants and Masterminds 3rd Edition gets a rating of Strongly Recommended. Anyone considering running a Supers game should at least have M&M in their library, especially if you've got a bunch of D20 folk on your table. And as a final note, I would pay good money to see an actual comic version of Emerald City, M&M's default setting. Even if it were a mere trade paperback, it would be fascinating, especially in the push for independent works the last few years, to fill the niches the big two can't or won't. Put on Indiegogo and they will come. If you build it. Stay frosty, everybody.